Today I'm just, well tonight I'm just trying to get a little bit of stuff done. So um, a couple of the dogs went through their Katundra beds. So I now have been buying, I used to buy the woven cover ones because I felt like, oh, the dirt could go through and, um, and it was, it was like more breathable so i thought all oh, those are great which they were but they do seem to break through them faster so um let's see i have a bunch of these i so i ordered um all the replacements so violet is a big girl so she had a woven one it didn't hold up and um who else so this right now i'm doing grizzly because he put a uh, grizzly put a hole in his so, and this is what you can see, but what I mean by the woven, this is the old one and it's kind of a woven. These are all Kadundra beds. So now this is a, actually, it looks like perforated, um, uh, almost like rubber. It feels like heavy duty plastic, I guess, vinyl. There's the word. It's a vinyl one. So I got all my order in and this crazy cat. Um, yeah, I put in the order, got the three replacements, uh, Violet, Grizzy, and Farley. Farley's isn't that bad, but his is coming apart at the seam. This one is different. This one, as you can see, he popped a hole there. So this is his fault. This, this product didn't fail. This was Grizzy. Um, but Farley's, it was like over here, the seam came loose. So that means the product kind of failed. But Farley is also a big guy. And these are the extra large ones and you can see how the dirt like falls to it this one's kind of got some dirt so I'm grizzly now it's gonna have to have one of these this crazy cat is trying to watch me these are hard to put together but they love them so I guess I gotta get at it so the sides going pretty easy I also for forgot to mention that I'm part of the uh, Corunda Pro program too so everything i do buy i get a discount because we buy so much from them so it's for breeders or people that has multiple dogs and you are spending a lot on replacement pieces so we did uh, we were using vihu for a little bit but they you couldn't get any of their products so we stopped using them and we went back to the carunda beds um and, but they do have a pro plan so you can get a discount. So every bed I've bought, it's been at a discount. The replacement covers at a discount. But again, I just bought three covers. So you know what I mean? I am spending more money probably than the average uh, household on stuff like this. But just thought I'd throw that out there. Okay, so one is done out of three. And they did have this product that I wanted to try. Let me get it. Fleece-like bed. So we have... Um, because it is vinyl so this is kind of cold in the winter um in the summer it's nice but they corunda sells these and it's literally just feels like um a couple pieces of wool and then just straps on it i mean i know how to sew i probably could make these if i only had time so i only purchased one and um with my um discount i think it was like 30 bucks i could double check i could be wrong but it wasn't that bad so i figured i'll try one and i actually got this one for ebony plastic upstairs um some of the rooms some of the rooms stay warmer so i don't really worry it too much but um it seems like violet daisy and benson's room is kind of a cooler of the where the heat goes so i figured i would try these with them i could actually even make one of these I should have probably, but the, I'm not sure how much cloth costs, but if, um, if they like them, I think I will. I won't spend 30 something dollars a piece. This is just a big billow case is what it looks like with some nice fur. All right. Let me try it on. See how it goes. Farley has decided I need help putting this bit together because it's taken me so long. Hey, Abigail. Hey, Gooba. I have a little snack for her. So you see why she's watching me like show you what it is it's got peanut butter. it's a peanut butter inside with a, like a sub roll this is her favorite treat so she's getting ready to go up for the night so this is like a little treat they all get them isn't she funny come on Far. farley's busy checking out what's going on that was it that wasn't so 
Probably some else. I know, you want your biscuit. Come on, Far. My big help was right here. Rhea playing with the cat, Salem. She sent tends to drag the poor guy around. We try to save him most of the time. How's Salem? He does like to play with her, though. She wiggles her little tail like a brat. She's holding real still so the kitty gets close to her. You went to play with the kitty? <laughs> so what I'm doing today is I'm actually making, I found this like recipe for this treat online and I said, oh, I'll try it. You know, how bad can it be? Because it's actually made with carrots. So I actually was at um, BJ's, I have a membership. So I actually got, this big, big bag, because I started with like a two pound bag. This is five pounds of carrots. Um, I started with a small one and tried it and to see if they would like it and they actually loved it. So it's literally just two ingredients, carrots and chicken broth. So I even got a bunch of these, like four of these or I don't know, five of these at Sam's Club, uh, uh, BJ's, I keep saying Sam's Club, at BJ's for a reasonable price. So basically, all you have to do is cut up the carrots and boil them in chicken broth. Once they're tender but not falling apart, then you take them out. So that's what I'm doing today. I'm uh, getting, I got the pot ready for all the big carrots that these guys, and I'm gonna see how many I can do. Um, I may end up doing, um, you know, having to use more than one of these, but when I did the two pound, so here's a good example. If you only got two pounds of carrots, which probably normal people would <laughs> for their dogs, but because we have a lot, we, we buy and we make in bulk. Um, so one of these was, totally fine for two pounds of carrots. So I have five carrots here, so I might have to use more, but like I said, I did buy this at Sam's Club, and it's just a Sam's Club brand. It's nothing spectacular. It's just chicken broth. You can use beef broth too, too if you want. We do usually stay away from chicken, like dog food and stuff, because it tend to, um, if you're gonna have allergies, it's usually to chicken. But this didn't bother them at all. It's basically just, a, it's giving the carrots a little bit of flavor and they they really did love them too. So I'm gonna make some of those. So I'm basically just snipping them off the tops and nothing goes to waste here because I'll feed the tops that I'm not feeding the dogs. I'll feed these just to my chickens, I'll like them. So I actually cut them, I should get a plate so I don't, Mar up this ugly cat of mine. This is the worst room, the kitchen I hate. Um, so these are pretty long carrots. So this one I'm probably gonna cut up to threes. Oops, those are hard. So the snack size is like this big. Pretty good size, that's about three inches. So I'm just gonna get them, and I'm not peeling them or anything because these are these are been washed. Um, so they'll be good to go and um, a little bit of peel is not gonna hurt our dogs. And I didn't peel them before because that would be more work for me. And I hate peeling stuff. I don't even peel potatoes until after they're cooked. So yeah, I'm one of those. And I mean, if I feel like, you know, rinsing them isn't enough, like this is kind of a smaller one. So I just cut that up to two, so. So I'm gonna put in as many carrots as I want first and then I'm gonna uh, cook them or put the stuff over the top. Are you waiting for your treats to come out, Fiona? So Fiona was on baby duty last week. Uh, she had to watch one of her grandkids. Huh, Fiona? She said I'm busy. Uh, yeah, so one of our, we have two grandbabies that were due in December and the first one was born. Um, everything's great with the baby and the baby's healthy and we're pretty happy. Um, another little granddaughter, 
So now we have, I have four. And we do have another baby due this month. So we'll see what that little baby's going to be. But um, So we had one, our other granddaughter here while her mom and dad were busy, you know, having her sister come into the world. So um, Fiona does great with them. All the, all the gang love to see the kids come over. They're all really good with them. And most of them, like Fiona, is over 10. And she's never been around little kids, um, just our own kids. But, like, it just shows what a great breed the Danes are. They actually do wonderful. They live. And the dog, all the kids really like Fiona. And Fiona's foot looks swollen today. Um, yeah, she has good days and bad days, like I guess the rest of us. But she's pretty fabulous. I'm a pretty girl. You waiting for your treats to get done? All right. See if you finally decided to take a nap. Yep. Uh, the lighting is horrible at night, so I hate doing videos at night. But uh, this is when I'm available, so... Um, yeah, so last week we didn't have a video because we were busy with our family. Um, we welcomed another baby into the, our family and, um, we're grandparents. So we help out with the other, the other babies while their parents are busy with the new baby. So, um, we were busy last week with her and it was great to spend time one-on-one. -on -one. Um, we love having our little grandchildren over, um, mm -hmm. And um, a little update on Duder. He actually did find his forever home. Um, he became available. He's a beautiful tan piebald. Um, and he's about 10 months old and his family needed to rehome him for unforeseen circumstances. So, you know, we have such a great... Um, we have a great extended family and somebody actually um, has taken him in and he's actually with one of our other, some of our other Danes. So um, it's a good, um, I hope, you know, it's sometimes things happen and, you know, you just try to move forward. That's why we always say, like, if you need help, um, we do whatever we can. We try to do our best to help rehome. Um, and right now with um being pretty full and we have pregnant um we have one pregnant we wouldn't um take anybody back into our home just because of viruses and stuff like that but we will always real assist if we can we have taken them back into our homes when we needed to um and when we had the availability like w with our own life um so we do whatever we can but um so he does he has found a new home so i'm ha so um, we're still waiting on Cheska to find out the results of her breeding, but if most of you know, Daisy is pregnant. I actually looked at her puppies, uh, uh, was it yesterday or today? I don't, I don't know. Um, so I did look at them, I think it was yesterday, and her babies are getting so big. She's actually starting to put on a little, a good amount of weight. She is, um, a stocky girl. Even though her weight doesn't, she's like 110 pounds, which you think is pretty small, but she's not really tall. Um, so usually if they're very tall, like Ellie, she's very tall. She weighs a good amount because she's lean. She looks lean. Um, Daisy's a little bit shorter, so she looks thicker. And Benson, that's her sister, her biological sister. Um, she's a little bit thinner than her. She's like a hundred pounds. But again, both of those girls are a little bit shorter. So then like most of our Danes are taller than that. But the funny thing is like, even with, um, I was, I'm talking to somebody and it, it's weird because like sometimes you'll have, um, smaller parents and you have these huge dogs. So it, it really it really is weird genetics and like their height, like, um, Cheska, she came from, uh, Nala and Diesel and she's, she's taller than both. She's taller than her mother and definitely taller than Diesel was. So it's the weirdest thing. And then you have, um, Duder. He comes from, her, uh, Grizzly and his mom is Cheska and he's a big guy. So it's like, and Cheska is definitely taller than Grizzly. Grizzy is very muscular. Cheska is very lean. Um, she looks great proportioned like Ellie. She's another taller one. Um, but it is just weird. Like you could have, um, 
small parents and massive uh, or you could have big ones and they don't they tr they're more petite so it's like sometimes people will have expectations oh this this dane isn't big enough or this dane's too big you you know it's there's really no predicting they could take after the mom or the dad but genetics are fascinating i think they are um which reminds me um i did do a um as you guys might, if you follow my Facebook, you'll see that I had a, got a coupon code at, through Animal Genetics, which I love doing testing and stuff through that place. Um, I actually, this time I'm doing um, color coding testing. So when it comes in, I'll explain to you like the results and what we did. So I sent it out. They had like a really great coupon. It's normally quite a bit. I would say they were half price, which is really a really good deal to me so um what they do is they send you um well you do the information online so you print it out like your paper saying you paid and what it is you're looking for you put in the information of your dog which ours is daisy and um i put in like her akc number and stuff like that so it's on file all my stuff's on file there too and then what they send back is they'll send you a swab kit and what it is basically you just go in their cheeks and rub each side of their cheeks and then you put it back in the bag kind of put a little tape on it to seal it and send it off um, I've done numerous um, testing for this particular thing through color panels through them so I'm really kind of excited to see what she carries um, do you have to do that no I just kind of like to do it I like to see I can I went back into their family trees and saw what they could possibly carry and by looking at the family tree you'll get she'll get some from each one but there'll be different ones like mom could carry blue and harlequin and maybe she just carries harlequin you know what I mean so it doesn't necessarily mean if the the, they carry everything that the parents do. They only get specific things that they kick off from parents. Um, so they'll get some of it, but not all of it. So I'm kind of curious to see what she has. Um, I'm really excited to see this litter um, for Daisy and Grizzy. I'm, I'm so excited if we have any kind of chocolate variations and spots. A lot of people like spots. I myself... Um, love spotted things too um, so we'll see um, but I did tell you I was looking at her her babies look so big and they look, kind of look like they're kind of squished in there now and you can actually see little spines and see them moving around I can even with my ultrasound cue in and see heartbeats and so again I didn't go to school for ultrasound or anything like that but I have had my own machine and been I feel like if you want to learn something if you dabble enough into it or you know figure it out you can figure out anything so I figured out how to use it how to pick up this or that or like sometimes people will mistake like their colon for puppies and I can identify the difference between no that's that's her colon or no that's her kidney or there's her um, bladder so these are all like things that I'm picking up I really enjoy it too I think it's pretty awesome to see in <clears throat> a lot of years I had paid the vets to um, do these tests for me and they're really expensive so I feel like I've already um, gotten my money back for my ultrasound machine I think that was my best investment I've ever had um, pedestrian machine let's talk about that um so as you guys all know i followed daisy's heat from day one so i so what i wanted to do is i wanted to put her out with grizzly every day so they get like a courtship so once i realized she was coming into heat they went out every day together every day they played they frolicked they became good buddies i mean he already goes out with her anyway but i made sure it was just those two <clears throat> <clears throat> and um you know they frolicked around they played um i started pedestrian testing and when i did the machine said i was already too late to breed her and i'm thinking you got to be kidding because they've been going out every single day together that's the one thing i have done i didn't track her pedestrian maybe in the beginning as close as I did because I tracked it. It was really low, so I waited like three days and then it said that she ovulated and she's done. And I'm like, oh my God, how could I have missed it? Grizzly's been out with her every day and he's a proven stud. 
<clears throat> so I was like, oh, I don't know if I should just not put them together anymore. And it was actually my husband that I talked to and my daughter saying like, why don't you just let Grizzly do it? Um, he knows the instincts. He's a proven stud. Just let him be. So I did. I just kept putting him out. Um, and then the next day I checked her pedestrian again and the numbers had come down a little bit. So I'm like, this is really weird. And, um, there is a calibration chip in my machine. I put it in and calibrated just to be sure. <laughs> and the numbers were still high saying, basically, if I want to breed her, I would have to do the, um, like the medical implant. Um, and I was like, I'm not doing that, you know, and why wouldn't he show any interest in her if she had ovulated? So I put him back out and wouldn't you know it, one day I'm just having a conversation and I hear uh, a sound. I go out there and they're tied. I'm like, okay, so great. Am I just going to have a singleton? So these are all things I've been thinking about in the back and haven't really said anything because if you breed too late or too early, that's how you get singletons or small litters. And I don't, I don't want a small litter because it's, I've had no luck with singletons. I've never had one that survived. Um, <clears throat> and it's easier for mom, for milk, mastocytis, uh, you name it. There's more pros and cons. There's more cons to having a singleton than pros. So I was like, great, they bred. What is she maybe just going to get pregnant with a singleton? So I really, in the back of my mind, that's what I've been kind of thinking like, great, you know, uh, According to the pedestrian, it said she's done, but according to Grizzly, he said she's not. So I put them out. I skipped today, put them out again, and they bred again a natural tie. <clears throat> and so I did the twice, and then I waited 30 days, and she has multiple puppies in there. She does not have one or two. She has a, a normal size litter. So I'm wondering about this pedestrian machine that I spent a fortune for, how accurate it is now, because I based Violet's breeding off that machine also. So I actually listened to the machine with Violet. Once her numbers were too high, I stopped putting them together. And I think that was the problem. I think the machine was off and Grizzly didn't think she was ready and he didn't breed with her. So I think trial by error, I'm wondering. So I do believe in Grizzly. I always have um, believed in my males. I never had a pedestrian machine. I never did pedestrian testing in the past because I know Frank would tell me right before the girls came in, Farley's the same way. Those are my males. Hurley, again, he would let us know before the girls even came into heat. But I have a new stud. I didn't have a lot of luck with Diesel. Um, <clears throat> for studying, it was hard. He had very little litters. Um, so it was like, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I'm going to get a pedestrian. I'm going to go by that because I don't know if Grizzly is going to be a good stud or not. He was, he's a young guy. You don't know. Heavens, you don't know. And, um, so I used that machine and, you know, he actually, in the beginning, I didn't have it, and he was doing fine. He was he produced with uh, Francesca. They had their litter, and I mean, I did track one litter with a pedestrian, and we bred that day, and we had success before for artificial insemination. Um, but yeah, I almost feel like that's how we missed Violet's heat last time. We listened and we followed the pedestrian machine to the T. And I think we stopped breeding her too early because if I had done that with Daisy, she wouldn't be pregnant right now with a full size litter. I mean, I don't know if she's having 10 or six or seven, but to me, that's a good, you know, five, that's a full size litter. So, um, as long as it's not a singleton or two, which I know I saw today, I saw multiple ones. I saw them moving around. It was so sweet. So when Violet comes into heat in the spring, we are just going to do a little courtship with her and Grizzly with just each other. And I guarantee we have better um, outcome. The thing of breeding is you just never know. Um, it's trial by error. Um, you learn as you go. Um, you realize um, there's a lot. There's a lot that goes into it. You know, there's a lot of just care for the dogs on a normal day-to-day -day basis. And then um, preparing for puppies. We have transition the mother over to um, 
puppy kibbles and then we're going to get the whelping rooms ready and how we're going to run it if we have two litters which we might if cheska's pregnant um still too early we need another, about another week for cheska um so you know and then all the supplies it's it's to us we enjoy it but it is a full-time job and responsibility to make sure they have what they need make sure everybody's gone to the vet what they need to make sure they have the time that they need with us so and then to try to fill in other things in between fiona are you waiting for your treats I gotta go check on the carrots, but that's the update for this week. Uh, what we're doing, what our plans are. Uh, we have a lot of scrambling around to do because um, we will have a our four-legged grandkids here for a few days when baby number two comes into the world. Um, so we will have Hurley, Callie, and Lexi coming and staying with us while their human baby sibling comes into the world. So um, we're getting ready for them. We're getting everybody's kenneled so they can have downtime. So even when they come over, they have their own place too. They have a place with us. They they haven't been here since last, uh, about a, almost two years ago. It was their last day here, but um, we'll get there. We'll get it. They know us. They love us at all. It'll go great. I think we'll see so these are boiling and when I put my knife in they're really tender so I'm gonna shut them off let them cool and put them in the freezer so they can have some good healthy treats hmm. hey baby hey baby girl oh my god what a crappy day it's uh overcast but it's warm so actually i was able to um finally get the back door done for my babies pretty exciting huh daisy i mean um with the temperatures and not having a lot of time somebody's getting big yeah oh uh, yeah i know it's you yeah 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 that's who i'm talking about Look at she's shedding too. Oh my god, she's shedding. Okay, let's take a look at the door. Oh, what did you think of the door, Daze? All my hard work, efforts. So there she is. I'm so proud. So much work. So that's the massive door. I had to. Me and hubby hung the rack. Oh, the slider. That was right in my gut just to hold this massive door and I got it painted too. So let's, um, this is a big chore, believe it or not, because this is a massive doorway. Hi, how hey, beautiful. Hey, hey, you're beautiful. So let's shut it so people can see what it looks like. No, I'm not going with you. You're in or out, you're in or out, you're in or out, baby. Oh, she's gonna be out. So I just shut the door. Let me get down the steps without breaking my neck. And that's the door shut. So you can see how massive a door that is. So that door is like eight foot, four by eight. And then that's an, an eight foot track at the top. So just love the way it came out. I should show before pictures on how awful it was. But you know, you live a place and you, you're busy living. You know, you don't, but I love doing like, home renovations i just never have the time uh working outside the home to finish them all so that's first portion of this construction out here that we wanted to do and i'm glad i went with a barn door and not the glass door that was there because the glass door that was there they always got dirty and uh, i'm going to repurpose it and use it for another thing so i love the the barn door it actually looks awesome with the house let me see I can back up far enough to ugh. I can back up far enough to show the house but doesn't that look like it should have always been like a barn door I just I just love the way it came out and we left the old windows on the back side of this um, you can see the difference but we already did a lot of windows so let's see who's behind door number one let me stop Stop focusing. Oh, 
Well, hi. And it has the little gliders. So it has stoppers up there to know when to stop. So this is like the sides with it open. And I did get a chance to paint everything. I'm going to put different like boards right here just to finish this out. But this all got done. And the lighting in here is not good. But it is, it is a, all painted red. I love the way it came out. I'm really proud of myself. <laughs> so then that's... That's it, guys. We did it! Daisy, Daisy, get up there and get a picture. You can get your picture taken by the barn door. Go on. Go ahead. You're usually good. You're, you're usually awesome at taking pictures. Oh, you just... She's such a love. Imagine her puppies. She said, my puppies will be here in about four weeks. It's gonna be hard not to keep any. Come on, come up here, Days. Days May. May is her middle name. Okay, let's show people like you really know manners. Stay there. Stay there. <laughs> Think she's gonna stay for her pictures? Oh, she is. Surprising. I just want to mention too that we actually hit 1,000 subscribers on our YouTube channel and how happy that has made us. It's been a long journey, but we made it there. Thank you. Help our channel grow by subscribing if you already aren't subscribed, please.